Well, as COVID-19 cases rise in Canada, with many provinces tackling a second wave, we asked you to send us your COVID-19 questions that you wanted answered. So joining us now this morning with those answers is infectious diseases specialist, Dr. Isaac Bogosh. Doctor, we got a lot of questions and very little time, so let's jump right in. Here's the scenario. If someone in your bubble works at a school and has taken all precautions and a student tests positive for COVID-19, even though the person in your bubble did not come in contact with that student, is it still a risk? Great question. Uh, at the end of the day, it is a risk. It's just a very, very small risk, but it is a risk nonetheless. This is where the public health units will be informing any close contacts about what they should be doing, about potentially isolating and about potentially going to get a diagnostic test. Not all these scenarios are created equally. So this is the time to reach out to the public health unit to get further advice on what the next step should be. All right, great. Let's move on to another Instagram uh, user. They want to know if COVID-19 is so contagious, why is it that you can see one person in a house get it and then no one else? I love this question. This is such a timely question. It certainly is contagious, but we also know how to curb the spread of this infection. If you're able to isolate, if you're able to spread apart, if you're able to put on a mask and you're not in close contact with the person, you will not get this infection. Of course, we know not all houses are created equally. Some people can accommodate that in the house, but we've seen lower income neighborhoods disproportionately impacted by this virus, especially with multi-generational homes. Uh, so sadly, we don't all have the means to self-isolate in our home. Luckily, many provinces and many cities have places where if people are infected and they have to self-isolate, they can go to another facility to self-isolate so that they don't infect everybody in the home if that's the scenario. So there have been some impressive moves by local governments to really help keep everyone safe, even with people who even in people who might not have the means to safely self-isolate at home. All right. Uh, thanks for that one, doctor. Now, Jenna wants to know how long do you have to be exposed to COVID-19 to contract it? Oh, that's a tough one. And in general, we know it's indoor environments in close proximity for a period of time. Oftentimes we say it's 10 or 15 minutes uh, in close contact. In all fairness, if people are just walking by each other, obviously that's going to be way too short amount of time for someone to contract it. But of course, there's always extenuating circumstances. I know it's disgusting to think about, but if someone with COVID-19 coughs in your face, you know, you clearly don't need a 15 minute exposure yep. <laughs> to get infected. So, you know, obviously there's going to be unique situations, but in general, it's close contact with an infected individual in an indoor environment for about 15 or so minutes. But of course, there's going to be various scenarios that might change that. Okay, this is one that a lot of people want to have answered, but it's coming specifically from Nancy. She says, has the percentage of positive cases increased? And if yes, by how much? I guess she's asking, how important is context? Yes, so context is extremely important. And there's a lot that go into each one of these metrics and no one metric, you know, number of new tests per day, number of new cases per day, the seven day average, et cetera, et cetera. No one metric tells the whole story. The, number, the, the percentage of positive cases has increased in many settings, not in all settings, but in many settings. Now, that might be reflective of a greater number of cases in the community, which we're seeing, for example, in Ontario. It also might be reflective that fewer tests are being performed, which we're also seeing in a place like Ontario. So just because the percentage of positive cases is going up, we have to look in the, at the appropriate context and we need to look at all the other metrics to really have a more holistic view of what's truly happening in a community. But if we're looking at a place like Ontario, we can see many of the metrics, for example, pointing in the direction of increasing number of cases. And part of that, not all of that, but part of that is reflected by the percentage of positive tests. Doctor, always love having you on the show. Really appreciate uh, you answering these questions for a lot of nervous people out there. Thanks so much. Have a great day. And you can keep sending in your questions to our social media pages. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.